In this video lesson, we're going to explore a muscle of the posterior superficial compartment known as the soleus. So first, for orientation, our client Justin is lying prone on the table. We are looking at his right leg, lower leg. We have a view from lateral to medial, so we see the lateral surface of his right leg. And our view is somewhat posterior to anterior, so we see the posterior surface of his leg as well. The soleus attaches proximally to the head of the fibula here and the proximal one-third of the fibular shaft here. It also attaches onto the tibia on a landmark known as the soleal line, which runs diagonally the way I'm indicating here from proximal and lateral to distal and medial. From these proximal attachments, the soleus runs distally, 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 and it ends up attaching onto the calcaneus, but it arrives there by contributing into what's known as the calcaneal tendon, also known as the Achilles tendon. The two heads of gastrocnemius also contribute to the calcaneal Achilles tendon. And because they have gastrocnemius heads with soleus, a common distal attachment, sometimes the two heads of gastrocnemius and the soleus are known together as the triceps suri. As far as joint actions are concerned, the soleus does not cross the knee joint, so it has no action there, but it does cross the ankle joint posteriorly, so in the sagittal plane it can plant or flex the foot at the ankle joint. Show us that, Justin. Perfect. Relax. Now, the line of pull of this calcaneal tendon is just a little bit to the medial side relative to the axis through the subtalar joint. So there is a slight capability to contribute toward inversion, which is a frontal plane, cardinal plane component motion of a larger motion pattern of the foot known as supination. Justin, can you show us that inversion? Perfect. Relax. Now, the soleus actually has one line of pull in the sagittal and frontal planes, so it really creates one oblique plane motion pattern, which would be a combination of plantar flexion and inversion, just like that. Can you show us that together? Perfect. Thank you very much. Now, for some context, we normally say that the soleus is deep to the gastrocnemius. And from the posterior perspective, it certainly is. Can you plant our flex against my resistance here, Justin? There we see the lateral head of gastrocnemius, and we can see some of the medial head over in here. Relax. The soleus is deep to that, but there is some superficial exposure of soleus in the distal medial leg, and there's quite a bit superficial exposure of soleus in the lateral leg. To better see this, let's ask the soleus to engage, but to get the soleus to engage without the gastrocnemius engaging as much, let's slacken the gastrocnemius by flexing the leg at the knee joint, and because the gastrocnemius crosses the knee joint posteriorly, this will slacken it and therefore knock it out of the equation more, and now, Justin, you're going to plant our flex against my resistance. Go ahead, and all of this is soleus in here. This is soleus, all of this in here. Relax. So the soleus might be deep to gastrocnemius from a posterior perspective, but quite a bit is superficial laterally, and there's a bit that is superficial on the medial side as well. The soleus in the superficial posterior compartment attaching to the head of the fibula, the proximal one-third of the fibula, along the soleal line of the tibia, running down distally, contributing to the calcaneal Achilles tendon, attaching distally onto the calcaneus.